Okay, my intent in this video is to demonstrate the disappearing course reversal on a GPS approach, whether it be a WAS or a standard Alpha, Zulu, doesn't really matter. So, real quickly, what this approach that I'm going to fly is, and I'm going to pull up my iPad in front of my computer here. I'm balancing this whole thing, obviously, on my um, iPhone. So, we're just going to brief this thing real quick, as you can see. Okay, so this is the GPS 1.0 into Skagit. You can see the point here is Soclo. We're, we're going to be sitting about right here where this simulator is going to start. We're going to choose the Soclo transition and then straight in. And uh, what we'll demonstrate here is that once I choose, I do not want to fly the course reversal. It, the GGN650 has a very difficult time reinserting it once you go on the mist. So I'm going to reset up my iPhone here. It's kind of crazy, but uh, seems to work. So I'm going to put this down here and kind of adjust the picture a little bit for everybody there so they can see it. All right, so let's go to nearest airport. Uh, we just took off from Friday Harbor, which is where the uh, simulators all like to start. There, if you have, it, if you ever had any uh, Microsoft simulator, so it's there's Skagit Regional. Let's do procedures. There's the RNAV 1.0. Notice how it default is always vectors. Whenever you pull up an approach, I was told by Garmin that it will default to vectors. That's interesting because the software must be written to reset when you hit vectors. And I'll show you that that's the magic key is how we're going to reset this approach is by going back to vectors once we start sequencing. Right now, of course, we want to go to Soclo because that's where we're at. Nicely, it asks us, do you want to fly the course reversal? Well, no, I'm only a few miles away from it. So let's activate this approach, go to nav, and let's get on our way since uh, it looks like we're, now it looks like we're 10 miles away. So we're going to speed things up here and zoom along. And here we go. We're starting to pick up a little speed. We are doing a 4,000 foot hover. Keep in mind, we're going to do this at 4,000 feet. I'm not going to bother with actually following the glide slope. The glide slope and everything uh, works perfect on the GTNs, uh, no issues whatsoever. So we're starting to click along, picking up some speed, going a little faster than the Cessna now. Hopefully we'll be at jet speed here shortly. And uh, let's take a look at what our pretty picture looks like. All right. As you can see, we're heading for Soclo. And then there's a few intermediate step downs, uh, Ensu, Bren, and then the runway. And then as it's coming into pick, it's coming into sight here, our mist approach sequencing. Of course, as I go faster and faster, the mist approach hold is going to start to be getting huge here. Not much I can do about it, but we'll just let it go ahead and sequence through. If I'm able to figure out how to edit a YouTube video. Um, I'll go back and spare you these uh, few minutes here. What's, what's, what's interesting is the final approach fix, Soclo, seems to be the magic key of not allowing the reintroduction of the course reversal there. Once you get past that, even if we kind of abandon this approach and want to start and turn back around and go back into it, you won't be able to reintroduce the procedure turn course reversal without doing a kind of a little reset step here is what we'll teach here in a second. So ignore the big ugly racetrack. It, uh, yes, it's ugly, I agree. But that's just the GTN uh, Garmin resizing it for our massive 460 knot speed. All right, so here we go. We're starting to get on the approach. It looks like we've gone past Soclo. Let's go to the map page here. And indeed we have. We're gonna look at our flight plan and we're starting to sequence. We're going Soclo, Insu, Bren, and then the runway and then here's our missed approach. Let's go back to home, go back to the map, watch the pretty picture. Alright, we're zooming in here on Bren. It's easier to watch it on the MFD that uh, 
this trainer has then watching it on the little screen basically the same information okay the runway is only uh, six miles away I'll bring this back into view so you can look at it if you want we'll zoom in a bit Okay, so we're about 30 seconds away from the meat of what the issue is here. Coming up on the runway. Okay, so it's going to ask us to, if we want to go mist. There we go. Activate the mist approach. Okay, we are on our way. We're going to slow down here so it doesn't make things so godly huge that it's kind of hard to understand because we immediately had to go in the right turn to make this transition. So we'll start slowing things down a little bit. Okay, so this is where it becomes interesting. This is where you're on your mist approach. You're starting to clean up. You configure your climbing. You're following the mist approach. Let's say you want to shoot that approach again. Alright, so let's do that again. Normal 430 scenario, you just go in and reload the approach. Let's go do that. Home, procedure, and there's our approach, there's our sock load transition. So normally what we do is just say activate the approach. Okay, so we're on nav, let's activate the approach. Look at the issue here is we're going from sock low with out and hold to ensu. So what does that look like? Pretty ugly. It's a 180 degree turn back. No matter what we do, it's a 180 degree turn. Well, that didn't work. We don't want that. And let's so let's go back to this approach here. Um, the other way you can do it, of course, is remove the approach, come back in. But right now we're up and off, operating off the nav, so you've got to be very careful if you start playing around with where you're going via your GPS and you're not in heading mode. See, we're still making a nice gradual turn to the right. So that's one issue you've got to watch out for when you start playing with your GPS, of course, as you learned before. So let's, let's go back to select the approach. There's another transition called Island. And we'll look here. Island is just a point that would be like, oh, that's perfect. We can go back in, do the reversal, and away we go. Try to get that in fo focus for you. Fantastic. Let's do that. So we've chosen island. Let's activate the approach. Oh, island, sock low, ensu, no hold. What's going on? Okay, so as you can see here, we're gonna go to ensu, we're gonna go to island, up to sock low, and of course ATC would be expecting us to fly the course reversal, report procedure turn inbound the GTN still is not inserting it. This is something to be aware of while you're flying that if you get in this scenario, here's the way I figured it out based on the information Garmin gave me where they said that vectors is the default when you load it. So I tried this and it seemed to work. Before what I've done in the air, I've gone, I loaded an approach nearby airport and kind of wiped it out or deleted it. But here's one way to do it. Okay, so let's sync up our heading bug. We're gonna have to fly in heading mode temporarily. Okay, now we're in heading mode. Let's go back to the home procedure. Here's how we're going to do it. We're going to choose the vectors. That's the magical reset. Activate that approach. Of course, the vector is just as a big straight in. Still, we're flying towards uh, our transition. Now, let's go back and reload the approach with the transition we really want. Select approach. That's the approach we just have been doing. Instead of vectors, we're going to go to Saklo. Activate the approach. And there, it has reinserted the actual hold. It didn't ask us for it. It reinserted it because it assumed we want it from here. So that was how I had to reset it. I had to go out and choose vectors. Of course, we've got to hit nav. Can't forget to do that in real life. And we're heading towards Saklo. And indeed, there is our hold being drawn back in. That's one of the quirks I found in the software.